Earlier in the day, Donald Trump was sitting for an interview before he went to his criminal trial. We didn't know what the interview was. We now know it was for Pennsylvania's largest TV station, ABC6 Action News. And Donald Trump gave an interview that was absolutely devastating. Earlier in the day, our editor-in-chief wrote, this morning before court at Trump Tower, Donald Trump was shooting a propaganda video. It actually turns out it was this interview for ABC6 in Pennsylvania. And during the interview, Donald Trump attacked the New York judge, attacked witnesses personally in violation of the gag order, committed to taking the stand at his trial. Donald Trump also spent two minutes rambling and mansplaining about abortion rights. He took away and he says that things are great and people are so happy and that he's the one who took away Roe v. Wade and that everybody's super happy about that right now. Let me share with you what what Donald Trump said in this interview, because this is going mega viral. J.J. Abbott, a reporter, described what uh, went down, and here's how J.J. Abbott described it. Trump's team let him do a lengthy interview with Pennsylvania's biggest TV station, ABC6 Today. It did not go well. In addition to some horrible abortion mansplaining, Donald Trump did all of the things that we just laid out. What a blunder. Here is the headline from ABC6. It says, former President Trump airs grievances over Michael Cohen during exclusive Action News interview. Donald Trump spoke with Action News via satellite from New York, where he remains tethered due to his hush money criminal trial. Let's just take a look at one of these segments from the interviews. Let's from this interview. Let's play it. Shift to the trial, if we could, for one second. Where is your concern level at this point regarding David Pecker's testimony and Michael Cohen's testimony? Well, Michael Cohen is a convicted liar and he's got no credibility whatsoever. He was a lawyer and you rely on your lawyers, but Michael Cohen was a convicted liar. He was a lawyer for many people, not just me. Are you prepared to take the stand if it comes down to it? Oh, sure, I'd, I'd very willingly take the stand. Right now, if you look at what the uh, legal scholars are saying, and as I said, uh, Jonathan Turley, McCarthy, uh, Dershowitz last night, they say there's no case. Yes. There is no case. They brought a case that doesn't exist. And they're right. Other than we have a very conflicted judge. A judge is highly conflicted. He, he should recuse himself immediately. There's never been a judge so conflicted as this guy. He should absolutely recuse himself immediately. That's all they have. They have a good judge for them. But other than that, they have no case. And here's the portion of the interview where Donald Trump is rambling and mansplaining and saying these horrible things about taking away Roe v. Wade. This is being blasted now to Pennsylvania, to a swing state where, you know, they are getting to see the real Donald Trump that exists, that a lot of the media has sheltered people from. But now that Donald Trump's actually taking these interviews, you see how unhinged and how uh, dangerous he is. Here, play this portion of the clip. Now, the Biden camp seems focused uh, a lot of its message around the abortion issue and the passage of the infrastructure deal. What is your counter message regarding those issues? Well, first of all, on the infrastructure deal, a lot of it's for the Green New Scam. And a lot of that money is being wasted and it's caused inflation and it's going to cause higher taxes and it has caused higher taxes. On the abortion thing, and it's a very uh, simple uh, situation that has now been worked out, for 52 years they've been trying to get it back to the states. I was able to get it back to the states. Now all of the states are making their decision. Pennsylvania is making its decision. They're all making their decision. And this is what people have wanted. It's taken the complexity out of it. It's very simple. It's now states. The people are voting and they're voting all over the country. Uh, sometimes it's conservative, sometimes it's not conservative. But the abortion issue is taken has been really largely taken off the table because when we did this, we did what both sides, everybody wanted, legal scholars wanted, everybody. They wanted to take abortion out of the federal system and put it into the states. And we were able to do that when we terminated Roe v. Wade. Now, when the when you look at it and you look at what's happening all over the country now, states are voting. Ohio just voted. All different, by the way. It's tailor-made, and it's really working out well for, 
for people. And they're very, very happy. Every legal scholar felt and felt for a long time. For 53 years, they've been trying to do it. It was wrong being in the federal government. Now it's in the states. Your state's going to vote. Uh, they're all going to vote. And it's really taken it largely out of play. And in terms of the IVF fertilization, we are totally for that because it helps women. We're looking to help women. And, you know, they tried to pin that on us. And actually, they were the ones causing problems. We are totally for IVF, the fertilization, and we are going to really run on it and run on it very hard. I want to compare that, though, to a recent interview with President Biden in Pennsylvania. This is in Pittsburgh with my brother, Jordy, who interviewed President Biden. Here is President Biden with Jordy. Let's play this clip. The only two presidents in American history have lost jobs from the time they got elected to the time they left were a guy named Herbert Hoover and this guy, what's his name, Trump? <laughs> he lost them, too. And here is another portion of President Biden's interview with Jordy. Play the clip. When you were in Pueblo, Colorado, you actually met my brothers. I know. And then just a few short weeks after that, Congresswoman Boebert, she left her district. Now, is that a coincidence or dark Brandon at work? It's classified. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Here's President Biden speaking in Tampa, Florida as well. And uh, President Biden talks about how Donald Trump is describing the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade as a miracle. And Biden says, and I'm not sure where Trump gets that from. Maybe it's in this Bible that he's trying to sell. Watch this slam. Play the clip. Trump bragged how proud he was to get rid of Roe v. Wade. Over He took credit for it. He said there has to be punishment for women exercising the reproductive freedom. His words, not mine. He described the Dobbs decision as a miracle. Maybe it's coming from that Bible he's trying to sell. Whoa. I almost wanted to buy one just to see what the hell's in it. Folks, it was no miracle. It was a political deal to get rid of Roe A deal. A political deal he made with the evangelical base of the Republican Party. To look past his moral, if they look past his moral and character flaws in exchange for his commitment to appoint justice to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe. And here, President Biden once again goes after Donald Trump for Trump bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade. Play this clip. Well, you know, now Trump says the law is, quote, working the way it's supposed to. Trump goes on to say individual state laws are working, his words, brilliantly. Brilliantly. It's a six-week ban in Florida. It's really brilliant, isn't it? Even before women know they're pregnant. Is that brilliant? Look, just take a look at Arizona. It goes all the way back to 1864, before Arizona was even a state, before women had the right to vote, concluding that that's the law of the land in Arizona. And today, MAGA Republicans refuse to re re repeal that ban in, in Arizona. Trump is literally taking us back 160 years. He says it's up to the states, and this is all about state rights. But he's wrong. The Supreme Court was wrong. It should be a constitutional right in the federal constitution, a federal right. And it shouldn't matter where in America you live. It's about, this isn't about state rights, it's about women's rights. One more clip here from President Biden with a consistent, intelligent, concise message, unlike what you hear from Donald Trump, the rambling nonsense. Play this clip. Folks, it was no miracle. It was a political deal to get rid of Roe v. A deal, a political deal he made with the evangelical base of the Republican Party to look past his moral, if they look past his moral and character flaws in exchange for his commitment to appoint justice to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe. Don't think he's making a deal right now with MAGA extremists to ban nationwide abortion in every single state because he's making it. In fact, the MAGA majority in the House of Representatives has introduced three separate bans, three separate bans to, cho to ban choice nationwide in every single state. And this also follows Donald Trump in court where Donald Trump was complaining how he was struggling to sit up straight. 
He's also been described by a number of reporters as falling asleep during trial and looking weak. He was described more recently by Olivia Newsy as having this like trout-like face and that he looked like a, like a fish with his mouth open. Um, all very, very strange. But here's Donald Trump whining about not being able to sit up straight. Let's play this clip. But he's out campaigning. He's out campaigning, and I'm here in the courtroom sitting here, uh, giving, uh, sitting up as straight as I can all day long, because you know what? It's a very unfair situation. So we're locked up in a courtroom, but this guy's out there uh, campaigning, if you call it a campaign. Every time he opens his mouth, he gets himself into trouble. So you can judge for yourself, folks, but um, I think you see the difference right there. But that was the interview you saw that Donald Trump gave with Pennsylvania's uh, largest TV station, largest local TV station, a big blunder, but that's just who he is. That's why I've always said Donald Trump is never going to agree to actually debate, nor is Donald Trump actually going to testify like he claims he's going to testify in that clip. It's all, everything he says is a lie, just like he said earlier that there were thousands of protesters there for him. They just couldn't make it to the courthouse. Everything this man says, and I don't hate to even call him that, everything he says is a complete and utter lie. And the American people are seeing that. How unhinged, how strange. Let me know what you think. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Have a good one. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.